Make sure you go and check that out. If you've got a Bible with you this morning, turn to John in chapter number 3. John in chapter number 3. John chapter number 3, I mentioned this on, on Wednesday with the teenagers. Uh, John 3.16 used to be the most, uh, the most declared, the most well-known, the most quoted Bible verse in all of Scripture. And uh, that has since changed to uh, Matthew 7.1, uh, judge not. Uh, lest you be judged, and that, that has switched now. And so we have a society now, uh, we quote that verse even more so than we do John 3.16. And I think that's kind of an interesting thing. The, the desire to speak of the love of Christ has switched to the desire to use the Word of God to say, do not judge me. Uh, and so it's kind of an interesting thing, kind of an indictment against our society. But we're going to go to John chapter number 3. And even though it is a very familiar verse, it's going to be the foundation for our message this morning. And I think you're going to find uh, the theme is really easy to pick out of the, out of the verses we're going to look at. It's the idea then of love. The idea of love. Now when I, I talk about love this morning, I want us to find the discussion this morning on love to be something that changes what we do. I believe love should change the choices we make. I believe love should change the words that we use. I believe love should change the direction that we go. And we're going to start in John chapter number 3 because we see God leading by example with this. Because of love, God is moved to action. And I believe because of love in our own lives, it should move us to action. And I believe that God would have a hard time telling mankind that he loves us if it did not move him to action. If God created mankind and mankind fell in the Garden of Eden and in Genesis chapter number 3, and God said, boy, I love mankind, but I, I'm going to kind of stay out of this one. Well, then nobody would believe the love of God. We believe the love of God because the, the love of God is manifested in that he became a man and died for us. Herein is love. And we know the Father because of the love that he shows through Jesus Christ. And so love demanded an action. Love moved God to do something different. There's another passage in Scripture where Jesus was moved with compassion. And so love, if it is really love, it should cause a change to take place. Again, whether that's in the words we choose, the choices we make, and the direction we go, regardless of what that is, it should bring a change. Now, John chapter 3, look at verse number 15. That's an introduction. We'll spend the rest of the time developing that thought. John chapter 3, verse number 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Remember, Another place in Scripture, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish. And so here we look and we see the idea here in verse number 15 of not perishing. So he says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Because that's the desire there of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. There's a whole lot there that can be unpacked. The whole gospel can be preached right out of John chapter 3, verse number 16 then, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. Uh, but what I want us to notice here is when God says that he loves the world, it is not just words that are spoken. God says, I love the world, and so I'm going to act upon that love. Because love is only love if there's something else that supports it. Love as a, a simple emotion uh, is oftentimes what we think of. The idea of, oh, I, I love this, or I, I love that, or I love this person. But if there is not action that supports that, that love is not believed. I've illustrated before that if I, I say that I love my wife, or I love my kids, and I love my family, but every decision that I make as a man is selfish. You think about a, a, a drunk, and he goes and he earns a living, and then he squanders all of his money on himself and his kids go without and then he goes to his kids and says 
I love you. Do you believe that his kids are going to say, I know that, Dad? They're not going to say that. Because every dollar is squandered. The action of that man goes contrary to his words. And that emotion that he says he has, I, I love my children, but the actions are different. That's not love. It's not love. It's a love of self. And so I, there was this funny, well, I won't go there because it'll change the whole tone of the, anyway, I'll go there. There's this, there's this meme, and uh, these, these kids, this is a brother and sister, and they, they go to their dad and they say, who, who do you love the most? And he says, I love you equally, talking to his two kids, which puts you tied for third place, the family dog, the neighbor kid, and you guys are, <laughs> I, love, I love you equally, tied for third place. But anyway, um, I don't know why that popped in my brain, but um, John 3, 16, we see the love of God and then the, the action that supports that. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans in chapter number 5. I'll take you to a, a handful of passages this morning. We'll be Romans 5, then we'll be 1 John, then we'll come back to John, and then we'll end up in 2 Corinthians, and that's it. So we're not going to a whole bunch of different places, but I would encourage you to go there, especially this one. We're going to be looking at 10 different verses, and so if you can turn there, it's worth your time, and I'll give you the time to get there. And when pages quit turning, then I'll begin reading it. But Romans in chapter 5. Now think about this. There's going to be a lot of doctrine that is presented, just like there was in John 3. But the one idea that I want us to see in John 3 is God loved the world, and it caused his actions to reflect that. Now take that same mindset and look at Romans chapter 5. The Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Now notice there, there is an idea there of not being ashamed of the gospel. And the justification for not being ashamed of the gospel is the love of God shining in the heart. We see the love that is there. And the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given you. So there's a love that we see shining in our heart through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that love should cause a change in our heart. That love should cause us to not be ashamed of the gospel. So we saw in John chapter number 3, the love that God had caused him to be moved to action. He gave of his only begotten son because of love. Now we see within our hearts the idea of having, a, 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 having no shame for the gospel because of the love that is shed in our hearts. Look at verse number 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now think about that. God is saying, if you look at somebody and they're lovable and you love them and you hold them in high regard and now somebody says their life is on the line, somebody who is a, just a decent, good person may put their life on the line and potentially die for somebody who is held in high regard. Then he says now, even if they're just a good person, you can kind of see that. But, God says, but, but Paul here, he's teaching, he says, God didn't even do that for the righteous and for those who were of high regard. He says, but God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now think about that. It's the love that God had that brought Jesus Christ to earth in the first place. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Then we now see in, in Romans chapter 5, verse number 8, it's the love of God that is commended toward us that brings him to the cross. And the love of God doesn't even wait for us to be what we're supposed to be. 
The love of God doesn't wait for me to clean up my mouth and to clean up my attitude and to get my life straight. God doesn't wait for me to treat the people around me like I ought to. God doesn't wait for me to, to stop abusing different substances and keep my eyes pure and my ears pure. God doesn't wait for me to do any of those things. God says, while I am yet a sinner, while I am in the midst of being wrong, he commends his love toward me by dying on the cross. So here we see another example where the love that is shown in Scripture, it moved God to give his son. The love that we have shed in our hearts should cause us to no longer be ashamed of the gospel. It's the love of God who causes Christ to go to the cross. Love, then, is leading to a change. As we go on, verse number 9. Much more, then, being now justified by his blood... We shall be saved from, the, from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved in his life. God is showing us here, he went and died for us when we were sinners. Now that we have been reconciled, how much more should we love God? How much more should we desire uh, to have a relationship with God? When we were sinners and we said, I want to have a relationship with God. I, I need him. I'm lost. Now that we have been saved, we should even more so say, I need Jesus in my life. I want Jesus to, to walk beside me. I need Jesus. We should want him more and more as we mature. Not, he was good enough for salvation, but now leave me alone in life. That's contrary to what God says should happen. But as we go on, go to 1 John chapter number 4. 1 John in chapter number 4, and we'll look at verse number 19. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 19. And I review over and over again every time I preach because I want you to be able to leave with that specific understanding. So we saw first God loved the world and it moved him to give his son. We saw that when the love of God is shed in our hearts, it should cause us to not be ashamed. We saw that God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now we're in 1 John chapter number 4, verse number 19. We're going to see a very specific verse that addresses this. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 19. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother... He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? If you want to flip that around. And we saw in Romans chapter number, uh, Romans chapter number 5, we see that the love of Christ in our heart should cause us to not be ashamed of the gospel. We also see the love of Christ that is in my heart because he loved me first. I love him now. It should cause me to then love God my brother. And I believe that brother is much like when Jesus is talking about a neighbor, not just the person that lives right next to you. And I believe when God's talking about loving the brother, he's not just talking about the person who shares the same mom and dad that you've got. I believe it's broader than that. And I look and I see then the love that I should have for the brethren should be a consequence of the love that God has shown me. So I look and I see that action then follows the experience of love. God experiences love, he gives his son. God experiences love, he dies on the cross. We experience love, we should be loving our brethren. And we do that not because, not because we're amazing. It's the love of God that is shown to us that causes us to have that same love. Now, we go on another verse. He says in verse number 21, And this commandment have we from him. That he who loveth God love his brother also. So God says, here's love. Now here is the change or the action that comes along with it. So when God says, here's love, I'm going to give you my son. When God says, here's love, I'll die on the cross for you. We're supposed to say, okay, I have love. There's not a shame in my heart for the gospel. I have love. There's a love then for my brother. It should always include an action. Now go in your Bibles back to John in chapter number 14. John in chapter number 14. And again, this passage, and then just one more, and I will be done this morning. Probably not my longest sermon. 
And since it's not a long one, I say this to the teenagers all the time, since it's not a long one, I need your attention the whole time. I'm not asking for a whole lot. So John, in chapter number 14, look at verse number 13. John 14, and verse, let's go to verse number 12 instead. John 14, 